a project on the socket warpage. Uh, it's chaired by uh, Renchen Oi from Intel and uh, Wendy Xu from uh, San Denise. So myself, I'm Heidi Fu, I'm facilitating this project. Um, it's uh, grateful to have this opportunity uh, to share our results and uh, hopefully we can get more um, engagement and uh, participants from the industry for the future work and uh, other um, projects on the connectors. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, I will pass to Ren Chen to start um, the session. Really? So uh, yeah, <clears throat> thank you again, everyone, for uh, joining this uh, webinar. So I'm Ren Chen. I will be your main presenter today. And uh, along we have, uh, we will have a few uh, presenter to uh, <clears throat> talk about uh, their area of specialty in each uh, section. So <clears throat> the, main, the project here is uh, it's mainly a CPU socket. So we will be looking into the uh, CPU socket warpage uh, prediction and characterization. And we are very honored to have uh, a very well um, a balanced mix of uh, partners from the software side from the vendor socket fabrication side and also uh, measurement and, and of course um, the, the materials, the LCP material side. So this is the key members, uh, but of course uh, it, it, this has been a, a, a long journey and an interesting journey. There's a lot more uh, people who are in the back, at the back who is contributing to this uh, project. So apologies if we cannot uh, name them uh, specifically. So uh, just a quick glance through uh, the agenda. So uh, I will go through, I will spend five minutes to go through the uh, introduction and the background of the project and then followed by LCP material introduction. And we will talk about the uh, test vehicle, which is a, a, a legacy socket that is already out in the market for quite some time and how we use uh, the material from a new material from our um, material partners and to create a test vehicle to generate samples and to measure the room temp warpage. Uh, this information will then be used for by our uh, simulation partners for flow and warpage uh, simulation. Well, we do have an attempt, make uh, some, some attempt in the dynamic warpage but uh, we will give a status update on that and followed by the project completion summary. We will have a Q&A. Uh, hopefully we'll have enough time for Q&A at the very end. So uh, uh, just go through quickly on the introduction and objective. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with uh, the CPU socket that is uh, in the computer. Uh, we have an example of image uh, over here, <clears throat> as you can see, the CPU unit usually uh, sits on the socket on the pins here with a, pl a socket of plastic housing, which is uh, in dark color. Of course, uh, the complete socket comes with uh, the bracket and the mounting plate behind the motherboard, but uh, we are we are I mean, for the SMT performance of the socket onto the motherboard, we are focused on to the socket body the pin and the solda ball of uh, the software and the warpage, uh, resulting warpage of it. <clears throat> and what we see is uh, from the trend, uh, we do see that the pin, the package, CPU package uh, is getting larger and the pin count numbers are, is getting increased. Uh, this, that is the trend that we observe. So we do anticipate that uh, we need uh, larger and larger sockets. So uh, that's going to be a challenge in SMT. And of course, uh, uh, for the wall page measurement. And of course, in the design cycle of uh, a CPU socket, uh, the simulation uh, plays a key role. But of course, it has uh, its challenges because uh, um, most of the time, the flow analysis part of uh, the model especially in the pinhole regions, it consumes a uh, majority of uh, the computational resources. Uh, I would say that uh, easily it will take like uh, 90 to 
of the entire computational effort. So uh, this, and it is at some point, uh, it was so bad that uh, the computation, the, the simulation uh, couldn't even catch up with uh, actually creating a mode tool and run your, your experiment, your DOE. So uh, with that, uh, we are trying to make an effort to try to see that if there's any other way that we can speed up uh, the computation. And uh, hopefully we can actually shorten the design cycle. And uh, of course, uh, regain the significance uh, of uh, the simulation, uh, computer simulations uh, in the, uh, the entire design cycle of the soccer development. Of course, in this, that is key, key thing. And, uh, Along this project, we will also try to understand uh, the fiber film materials and the sensitivity uh, on warpage uh, <clears throat> and how uh, process conditions and the design, so the geometric design of the socket impacts uh, the warpage. Uh, I think I won't spend too much talking about uh, the purpose and the scope uh, because uh, I think I've covered most of it. Uh, but uh, I think mainly we will try uh, in this project, mm, this, the ballpark figure uh, of the socket that we get is uh, around 50 by 50, but in, in fact it's 60 by 50, 50 plus. Uh, of course, in, as a, in current trend in today, you will see socket size as large as uh, about 70. And we are uh, anticipating that uh, we are moving towards uh, near uh, in the coming years, we are moving towards near uh, 100 uh, millimeters. So the key tasks of this project, uh, yeah, so uh, just I go through very quickly. Uh, yes, we try to, uh, at the very beginning of this project, we try to uh, have brainstorming and uh, do some project planning. And uh, we try to get some, uh, survey from the industry and literature, and we find that uh, actually this information is not as uh, abundant as we anticipated. So that uh, gives us a motiv even more motivation to try to generate as much uh, fundamental studies to, uh, to understand uh, what's going on in the, uh, the CPU socket and especially in the LCP material. So of course, our second task is to uh, identify the material and to create a material framework. And we were lucky to have uh, Selenis to join us uh, halfway, uh, not, not halfway, but uh, maybe one quarter late into the project begins. Uh, Selenis joined uh, the team and that gives us uh, a, a, a lot of uh, opportunities to explore um, a, a lot of things that we wanted to do in this project. Uh, while we were working out on the discussion pro uh, process with Selenis, uh, the team, the software team already began, without waiting, the software team already began a preliminary round of flow and warpage simulation and try to uh, simplify and speed up uh, the simulation uh, cycle. And of course, uh, after we uh, finalized the participation from Selenis, we were able to receive uh, help and material from uh, to create our test vehicle and uh, to, together with uh, our socket partner. So that's uh, our five and task five, task six, and seven, the room time warpage measurement. And after that, the team finally, uh, our simulation partner with the um, material from Selenis uh, and after fully characterizing, we were able to do uh, a co more complete study of uh, on flow and warpage. And of course we managed to kick off uh, a little bit of the dynamic warpage. We hope to do more, but uh, due, to, due to the pandemic challenges. So of course uh, we will hope uh, we can do more in the future. Okay, so on high level, the simplified um, the concept of uh, getting the simplified uh, uh, model. Uh, it, it actually uh, hit us because uh, when we were in discussion um, trying to understand with one of our socket partners, 
uh, with one of the back then it was the most uh, leading the leading age soccer. So <clears throat> we find that uh, we were surprised that uh, to run a computational uh, model of an actual model, representative model, uh, it can some takes uh, one design of the socket. It can take up to eight to twelve days just to solve uh, each data point uh, in the rate curve here, and for each design. So. Um, what we are trying to do here is uh, the concept here is if we can, because we think that uh, in the pinhole region, the geometries are very repetitive. They are just repeat themselves uh, many times, one after another. So if we can find a way to represent the resistance in the pin region uh, in a simplified way, uh, we should be able to bring down the simulation time uh, of the flow part. Uh, the warpage part uh, usually doesn't take uh, long, just like uh, mostly yeah, in this case, uh, a few hours uh, to half a day versus the 11 days uh, prior to that. So if we can simplify the flow part, that will make things a lot easier. And of course, we know that if we simplify it, we will compromise on the uh, accuracy, but uh, that is okay. As long as uh, the compromise accuracy, it still gives us the same trend or the ranking of the warpage. So uh, we do not have to go through the pain of uh, run the simulation of all five designs. We just have to, we can quickly uh, use the simplified model to run the five, identify what is the best. And then uh, if you, you wish, you can rerun uh, just one of the full model. So uh, hopefully this approach will speed up uh, the, the, the entire design cycle of uh, the soccer uh, development. Okay. So uh, I think this is on the high level, the background. So I think in the next session, uh, we would like to uh, invite our uh, presenter, uh, Wendy from Selenis, to give us talk about the LCP material. Hey, okay, thanks, uh, Yuan-Chen. Yeah. Next page. Yeah, uh, I'm from Selenis, yeah. Uh, and the LCP is uh, one of uh, our engineering material field. Of course, besides that product, we also have other products like POM, GR, PPS, uh, and others. Then CPU socket is a uh, typical uh, and also challenge application. Uh, of course, besides CPU socket, LCP is uh, widely used in kinds of connectors and also components in E&E, auto, and other industries. Uh, because of its very unique properties. Uh, first, LCP stands for liquid crystal polymer. Then uh, as the right hand picture, comparing with the semi-crystalline polymer, LCP shows the pneumatic structure, both in solid and liquid phase. This leads to a high chain continuity and then very high mechanical properties and other advantages. Then LCP has a very good thermal resistance. Its DTUL temperature can go up to 340 degrees C. And based on that, it works very well for lead-free soldering process. Then in regards to molding ability, it has super good flow ability on the proper shear and is still free of flash issues because of its low heat of fusion. It's really a good candidate for thin wall and complex design. Then besides the above, LCP is inherently flame retardant with good chemical resistance and is the best class barrier to oxygen and moisture. And last but not least, it, it can contain reinforcements like fiber, uh, mineral, and other fillers. 
that uh, to help reducing anisotropy, anisotropy, then which offers nice space for compounding product development. Okay, next page, please. Then th let's go to view a little bit detailed properties. Um, for CPU socket, flowability, SMT process eligibility, and the dimension precision and stability are three critical requirements. This page talks how much LCP performs better than other polymers in this these three aspects. The the yeah you see it, it uh, comparing with the PPS, uh, PCT, PET, PPA, and at the uh, sector, and the, uh, the 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 top left picture talks about the flow ability. So based on the spiral flow result, it, it's very obvious LCP has almost a one time higher flow ability than other polymers. And the top center uh, picture shows because it's of its uh, low heat of fusion, it has the lowest risk of flash. That's very important for the production. Then, uh, th thanks to those uh, high flow ability and no risk of flash, and it, it allows the faster cycle time. Yeah. Then the bottom left picture talks about the eligibility of SMT process. Uh, here, very obviously, LCP shows the highest HDT temperature. Then about uh, uh, the component dimension precision, uh, because of volume change of LCP from melt phase to solid phase is the minimum, and that that it leads to excellent dimensional precision. Then during the working environment, uh, LCP has lower CLTE and lower water absorption. Those two points secure the dimension stability. Okay, next page. Okay, then for this project, Selenius selected three grids. They are Vector E488i, Vector FIT30, and Z9 5145L. Then E488i is a, a normal high flow and low warpage grid. And the FIT30 is also one with a high flow and low warpage. And uh, at the same time, FIT30 has a higher flow ability than E488i. Then uh, the uh, they they are E four eight eight I and the fit thirty are uh, uh, both glass fiber and mineral uh, mixed reinforced grade, and for zinite grade, it's a uh, forty five percent glass fiber reinforced and uh, a, it's a toughened grade. He, uh, then, as the right hand picture, let me take seconds to talk about this grade, zinite grade. Uh, it's a very balanced solution for CPU socket. Uh, first, about uh, flow ability. Here, it's uh, presented by injection pressure. It has a, a very a proper flow ability. Then, after SMT flattenes, here you show it also have a nice position. What's more, its weld line strength is also good, and that results in crack free during stitching. Uh, these three grades are commercialized uh, grades. Actually, uh, besides that, in our uh, portfolio, we still have other selection uh, for CPU socket. Uh, of course, Selenius keeps uh, active new products development in this segment. Okay, into next page. Thanks. Then, although LCP has unique advantages, it still has limitations, then the, the users and of course the material supplier need to manage those challenges. For CPU socket, especially the high density ones, uh, first we need to fulfill the part with a, a proper filling pattern. For example, we, we don't like a terrible hesitation and then 
by the wildlife quality. Then the second, the wildlife strength is another area we have to pay attention to uh, because LCP has a relatively lower wildlife strength retention uh, because of uh, its high chain orientation. Then, then the third one is a common topic for all po polymer uh, material. It, it's wallpage, right? Therefore, LCP air isotropic is the main reason to uh, generate uh, wallpage. Then we, we need to and can to manage it in several aspects, um, like, like part design to design um, and the material side processing. Then finally, uh, in the aspect of simulation, accuracy is a challenge uh, area because of the material itself specificity and also the thinner and the thinner and the more complex the design. I think both uh, cause the, the, the challenge in accuracy. Then calculation speed also um, confuse the, the, the users. Then we, we need to optimize that. Okay, then a summary. Um, LCP is a unique polymer material with many advantages and also with some limitations. Then we need to best use of its advantage and manage the challenge area. And this project cover, uh, I think, several areas of the challenges and with good findings. Yeah, um, that's from my side. Thank you. So uh, in the next session, I will move into the test uh, the vehicle and the coupon modeling from and also the measurements of the roof and wall pitch uh, of the bay housing and also uh, the complete subject after uh, but uh, after it was being fabricated. So I would like to thank the team again, especially Salonis, uh, Foxconn, uh, FIT, Foxconn Interconnect Technology, uh, Lutz and Enfinol because the team managed to take uh, advantage of uh, I think it was last year uh, where we are still in the middle of pandemics. And uh, it was in between, I think, two waves of uh, the pandemic. There was a very small tight window of opportunity. And uh, we actually grabbed that opportunity and uh, make the molding happen because uh, all three sites uh, are located on different parts in different parts. And you have to come together and to uh, discuss about the molding plan and the material optimum and also to make the uh, to execute the uh, the molding so uh, really thankful to the team for this uh, tremendous uh, effort so uh, i think as a uh, for those of you who are familiar so this is an example of uh, the injection of mold tool with uh, the, the typical parts are uh, uh, being labeled and at the bottom is the uh, cross section of the key part the main part uh, of uh, the uh, injection uh, barrel with the screws and the nozzle. And of course, uh, the processing, when it comes to um, processing parameters, uh, the parameter, there's a lot, there's a lot of parameters that can affect uh, the quality of the part. Uh, one, the key thing that we are monitoring here will be the mold temperature, uh, the packing pressure, uh, I believe here is uh, written as the holding pressure and also injection speed. So I think injection time also can be translated to that. Of course, uh, one thing that is not mentioned here is uh, if you if your part is uh, dimension has to be the same, of course, the geometry is not uh, out of the question. But uh, as I will be explaining here, uh, we do have allow some modifications uh, on the exterior part of the socket to uh, achieve a uh, wattage control. So you can see that uh, again, here is the picture of the CPU socket at large. And over here, uh, on the two pictures here, you can see that this is the top view uh, of the socket. Uh, the, the things that usually that uh, we will not change or is not allowed to change will be the coordinates or the locations of the pin here. Uh, you can see that there's a nest of pins here, and there are 2011 pins in this particular uh, socket here. 
And what we say here, which is our benchmark or our plane of reference, the POR, uh, is the socket uh, that doesn't have call out. So you can see that the frame and even some part of uh, the inner frame uh, it's solid, full solid, and then without, we did not remove any materials. Uh, when we say call out, so what we are actually referring to is uh, uh, usually if you, the, the warpage will be, will be very high. So we have to remove uh, some materials, uh, either partially at the frame or even uh, completely, as you can see, through holes uh, throughout some sections and also part of the inner frame. So uh, this is what we meant by uh, call out. Okay, just to get some terminology for our audience here. And at the bottom here, we have a simplified, uh, very oversimplified uh, socket fabrication process flow. So the first thing we do is of course, the injection molding is the, the dark, the black uh, plastic housing or the bare housing and Follow the next step is uh, the pin insertion or the contact contact pin insertion. So the pins are actually inserted into the each all the holes here. And of course, uh, next is the solder ball attach uh, process. So there are there are different techniques to attach the solder ball. So uh, and finally, uh, we will place a pick and place cap. Uh, onto uh, the pin. So it has a few purpose. One is to protect the pins. And also the other one is for the ease of uh, picking the entire socket and for alignment onto the motherboard when it is uh, when we are going for the SMP reflow. Okay. So uh, in uh, not only we um, try to create samples for the simulation team for validation and also for their study. We also took the opportunity to try to uh, run some skills on the parameter and try to see that how this parameter uh, will affect the warpage of uh, the, so the socket. Uh, the first thing of course is uh, we have three grades like Wendy uh, mentioned, we have three grades of uh, material, the 5145L, uh, the FIT30, uh, apologies for the typo here. Actually, it, everything should be FIT30. So this is just an, uh, an error in Excel when we drag that, the, the column, the rows down. And then the third grade is the E48I. And uh, when it comes, so we have three material properties, three materials, and uh, we vary uh, three processing parameters, which is the mole temperature, injection speed, and packing pressure. So uh, at the yeah at the beginning of the uh, the plan the project because uh, this is the socket is uh, actually a legacy socket the design the mold chase uh, everything is there and initially it was used on a different material other than sandalist materials by our socket partners but in this project uh, of course we want to we don't want. We don't want to go into the complication of uh, any IP related. So we use uh, like I think it's off the shelf materials that is from uh, Salonis. So uh, this is the first time the these Salonis materials are used on uh, the socket, and of course we do not expect it to be uh, optimized in terms of warpage, uh, and that is not our purpose. Anyways, our purpose is to generate a sample. And with a known material, known geometry, known process for uh, comparison to our uh, simulation, uh, for our simulation software comparison. So uh, we started off with having like a, a middle setting of each parameter and a low setting and high. We do not know in advance uh, what these values are going to be. Uh, it will. It has to be on the team, the molding team with the Salinas team, to figure out this window on site on the day of uh, the molding itself. So, uh, of course, uh, the lower end is to avoid uh, one. One extreme is to avoid the the mold flash, and the other extreme is to avoid uh, the incomplete flow or the short shot. So. Uh, 
we also collected a tremendous amount of uh, the ingestion profiles and the ingestion parameters, which are then uh, very useful for the simulation team to have a very representative uh, boundary conditions of their model. Okay. So this is just an example, one example. So we will go into uh, the activity. The first activity we managed to, to do is uh, with uh, loads. So um, I think unfortunately, loads uh, does not have uh, the call out, uh, uh, the, the POR, the non call out, they only have the call out uh, structure, the options. But anyway, we still go ahead with the, the, the molding. And this is the, uh, the runner and gates arrangement uh, from, from load for this particular uh, socket. And uh, some basic information on the mold tool and the setup uh, that was being used on the day of the molding. And you can see from, uh, I think from right to left, this is the sequence of uh, the short shot that was taken, 70% up until 97%. So this will be used by our uh, simulation team for the flow uh, accuracy validation. So uh, after molding, uh, loads uh, help us to do the uh, room temp uh, measurements on the socket. So uh, yeah, it's an optical, so I believe it's a confocal. Uh, approach and uh, measuring on uh, 179 points on the socket of uh, each sample. So high level, you can see that uh, here we have uh, a direct comparison of the bare housing, uh, the flatness of the warpage of uh, the E488I, FIT30 and 5145L. And um, the bare housing uh, Oh, okay, this is uh, uh, on the warehousing itself, uh, they are very close. Uh, however, Ben, if you remember the step of uh, the manufacturing after the warehousing, it is followed by the contact in insertion, or we call it uh, a stitch process. And then finally by a uh, ball attach. So uh, uniquely for loads because of their process, uh, there is uh, a slight reduction in the warpage as they progress through uh, their, their process. So this is something unique uh, to them. Okay. And then uh, when it comes to the parameters, the molding parameters, uh, we observed that uh, it, it, it was quite typical that uh, usually if you lower the mold temperature, uh, you will have uh, a better performance in warpage. Uh, and then uh, by FAT for one material, uh, which is uh, more affected by uh, the low injection speed. Okay. And then the shape, you can see the shape of the socket uh, to, uh, it has a slightly like a shadow, shadow shape. It has two corners, uh, which is bending on the higher end. So I would like to quickly uh, walked into the Foxconn uh, results. So on the Foxconn uh, side, uh, we managed to have uh, both the POR, which is the frame, the full frame without call out. And this is the, they have slightly different uh, runner and gate uh, design. And the setting of the two. And this is the short shot uh, receive, the short shot image. And we also have the call out version from uh, Foxconn. You can see that the call out version has uh, the features that are being uh, removed. Okay. And also the corresponding uh, short shot from the call out version of uh, Foxconn from right to left. So Foxconn helped us to, uh, to conduct uh, also similarly uh, room temp uh, warpage measurements to come up with a warpage or flatness uh, results. And uh, this is, uh, okay, I will try to walk through the, the audience and the team here. So this, the first two group is uh, 5145L. So these two group, 5145L. So uh, this group is the call out, the one where we remove the material at the frame. And POR is 
the without call out, which we did not remove the material in the frame. And consistently for the other two material, you uh, you can observe that uh, for those that you re that has a call out, which you uh, the materials are being removed, the warpage performance uh, is uh, much better than the, the group here. And what are these uh, individual groups, uh, uh, these individual data points in each subgroup? So each data point, uh, due to limitations, we managed to run, I think, three, right? I think it's three or six, I don't remember. So it's three data points. Um, uh, the first one in the group will be the uh, medium setting. So your mole temperature is the, me the median setting. Your injection speed is at the middle, medium, and your uh, packing pressure is at the middle. So uh, the, the signal might not be very uh, obvious in the call out uh, because the geometry already uh, sort of like uh, covers, covers up. But when you look at the pure out uh, samples, uh, remember this first one is the reference, uh, everything's at medium. You see that uh, consistently for packing pressure, if you increase your packing pressure, of course, uh, it helps. This is lowering the packing pressure, it gets worse. Uh, similar trend for the three materials. And uh, okay, to our surprise, injection speed doesn't uh, affect too much for this material. The low and the high injection pressure, uh, low and high, very close, low and high. And, if, and the last group is the mole temperature. So if you have a lower mole temperature, then uh, it also helps. So uh, if we, in we increase once, we increase the mole temperature, the more pH are increased. So this is consistent. It's to low and high mole temperature for cross tree materials. So uh, yeah, we after looking at this, but of course we were limited by the chance, the window that we can do the molding. So we did not, we, uh, personally, I will be very tempted to run a combo of uh, high packing pressure and a low uh, mole, mole temperature and see that if we can get uh, what, what's the outcome. But of course, uh, having said that, the key uh, influence here is still geometry. So geometry, you can see it uh, outweighs uh, in terms of performance, it always uh, a lot of all these parameters, but it is still very helpful because uh, you can still have these uh, parameters once you have you are done with your geometry. Uh, if you still wish to gain a further extra amount, a uh, further extra uh, performance to meet your customer's requirement. So the information, the learnings that we generated here, hopefully it can be helpful uh, to achieve uh, that objective. And here uh, is uh, the result uh, shared to us uh, from each uh, process, process flow. So uh, I would like to make a declaration here upfront uh, because uh, this socket, this design of a socket was never was not meant to be used on salinist material material any in the first place. In your typical uh, socket design iterations, uh, there will be a lot of back and forth, uh, a few, at least a few back and forth between your mold design and your material fine tuning. So uh, uh, you. You, you might be surprised to see that uh, this is the B, the BH is the bare housing, the plastic housing. Uh, contact insertion, the um, this, uh, after we insert the pin, and this is our uh, ball attach. So after the ball attach uh, here, uh, because of the technique, the technique uh, used by uh, Foxconn, so the uh, warpage jumps up. But usually the jump in the warpage is not that high. It is, uh, uh, of course, because there's a, after a few rounds of iterations, this usually will get con uh, managed and controlled very well. It's just that in this, we use whatever material we have, and we use uh, whatever uh, the mold shape that is available to us. 
and they are not optimized. So, but we run them anyway for uh, academic or uh, fundamental purpose to, to study. So uh, that's why we are seeing this uh, the, the the bigger jump. But in reality, that's not in the, in the real industry. You won't you won't see that higher jump. And of course, uh, but this also uh, triggers one thing, which is uh, the ball attach process uh, uh, does in have a, a something is happening in the ball attach, and it actually has something to do with the stress uh, relaxation of uh, the plastic housing or, or the re or the relaxation of the reg residual stress from the injection, which is why uh, it prompts us to think that uh, this is this this field this area is something significant. Uh, something important that we would like to uh, study further. And in the subsequent section, we actually uh, make an attempt to try to address uh, this field of studies on the shrinkage and the stress relaxation of our LCP. Okay. So uh, this uh, ends the, yeah, and this, some, this is an example of uh, the control and the shape. Uh, of uh, the stock head warpage. Of course, this is one of many. We generated a lot of uh, information, but uh, we, uh, we won't show all, so we will show just like uh, an example. Okay. So, uh, okay. So uh, I'm done on the test, the test vehicle and uh, the coupon and the room time warpage uh, sharing. So I think. Uh, before we go into the flow and warpage uh, simulation, so Haley, I just want to check: uh, Do we have any questions? Uh, no, we haven't uh, received anything. From okay. The chat. Okay. Okay. Let's go so, ahead. Okay, let's go ahead. So, uh, okay, in the subsequent session, we will come. We have two from two uh, of our software partners. So, uh, so first will be Autodesk. Uh, our presenter will be uh, Franco. So. Uh, Franco, you want to go ahead? Sure. I hope you can hear me fine. <clears throat> Thanks yeah. very much. So I'm going to present to you the work we did to simulate these molding trials of the CPU sockets. Yes. And so the simulation that we're doing is using our Autodesk Moldflow Insight injection molding simulation software. And with, there's two aspects. There's a filling and packing analysis and a warpage analysis. And both of these analyses, we've modeled the cavity where the part is formed, the CPU socket itself, with 3D tetrahedral elements. And the feed system, which carries the polymer melt to those cavities from the injection molding barrel, uh, is modeled as 1D beam elements. And we choose to use 1D beam elements because of the efficiency for computation time uh, and because the flow is a one-dimensional flow, so it can easily be represented. These one-dimensional beams have a multi-layer cross-section computation. So we have a temperature profile through their cross-section, a shear rate profile through their cross-section, and a viscosity profile through their cross-section. So throughout the analysis, we're using a non-Newtonian viscosity model, which means we're looking at shear thinning behavior. It's non-isothermal, which means we're looking at changes in temperature and how the viscosity changes due to changes in temperature. It's compressible, so as pressure rises, the density rises, and this changes um, the mass flow rates. And it means that the injection rate in the barrel of the molding machine is not the same as the volumetric rate that reaches the cavity due to these changes in compressibility. And it's a two-phase flow because there's a frozen skin layer building up in the cavity and the feed system uh, throughout the um, process as the material on the, which is in contact with the mold cools rapidly. So there's a, a changing flow channel dimension as well there. And as part of the flow calculation, we're also calculating the orientation of fiber reinforcements, which occurs um, due to the flow, the shearing forces, they align the fibers towards the flow direction. Also, there's a molecular alignment of the LCP materials. LCP is one of the few materials which uh, the pure resin itself has an anisotropic property, so it's different properties in different directions. And uh, and from the calculation of the fiber orientation and the residual stresses, uh, the thermal strains that are going to occur, we calculate the residual stresses which occur from the molding process. 
So when we come to the warpage analysis, those residual stresses are the input uh, for a structural finite element analysis, which finally gives us the, the final part shape and de deviations or deformations from the design shape. So just looking over on the right at the image of that simulation, you can see the partial filling and the flow has raced around the outer frame, which was solid. And with modeling here, the, the molding trials only had one cavity, which was open, but the tooling itself had four cavities and the feed system has branching to feed those four cavities. But for the molding trials that were conducted as part of this project, three of the cavities were shut off at the gate. But nonetheless, that means that polymer melt does go down into those other branches of the feed system and fill that volume. So that volume is important for the calculation of compressibility. So it's included in the model, even though only one cavity was molded and so only one cavity was included in the simulation. So if we go to the next slide, we'll have a look at some results from these simulations. And we're starting here just looking at the flow simulation. And in this case, for the Vectra E488i material, the POR, um, which is the case without core outs, so the outer frame is solid without any um, core outs. And here we're comparing um, molded short shot samples on the right of two different injection speeds, high injection speed and low injection speed. And they both show a similar pattern. You can see a subtle difference in the amount of hesitation in the pinhole region. Uh, for the low injection speed, it seems to be a little bit more hesitation, and that's circled there with the red circles. The, for the, in the simulation model, the feed system was included in the simulation. It's just not shown here in the results. And the simulation was conducted, as I said, with 3D tetrahedral elements. And the viscosity model was a special one that we've developed, particularly for LCP materials, which better characterizes the flow behavior of LCP materials. Um, some, uh, on a previous slide, you saw some, res saw some results that were just done with a standard viscosity model. So th this uh, LCP viscosity model is an important part of getting the flow pattern and the filling pattern and, and predicting the last point to fill accurately. And what we see in terms of fill pattern is a good agreement. And also there's a slight um, di change in the fill predicted fill pattern according to injection speed, which also matches the, what was seen in the short shot molded samples. So we'll go to the next slide and we'll see the similar comparison for the Xenite 5145L material. Again, it's the POR without core out. Again, two injection speeds, slightly more hesitation close to the gates uh, for the low injection speed. And again, with that LCP viscosity model, we see a good agreement in the filling pattern and uh, a slight indication of also the higher hesitation in the pinhole region close to the gates for the low injection speed. So moving on to the next slide, we'll see the same comparison again for the Vectra Fit 30 material. Um, these short shots are taken at a slightly later time, so the filling has advanced slightly more, but nonetheless you can see subtle differences in the filling pattern, more hesitation close to the gate, less hesitation far from the gate, and again that pattern's reflected uh, in the simulation results as well. So this is uh, for the flow simulations that I've shown you so far. We'll go on now to look at the warpage results and the, oh, I beg your pardon, I've skipped one, is that right? Um, we've also got the flow simulation result here for the loads molding of, uh, with core out. Um, the gating position in this case is different. And so the filling pattern is different, but we still see a reasonable agreement on that. There's, the molding samples show a slight variation uh, in fill pattern and depending on injection speed, that's not really picked up very well by the by the simulation, but the overall pattern is in fair agreement. So now we'll go on to some warpage results. So here we're looking again at the moldings, uh, the Foxconn moldings of the Vectra E488i with uh, looking at the low injection speed. We, as noted, the warpage results did not change so much uh, according to injection speed in these moldings. Um, so from the measurement, the measurement is just taken on the top surface. We've got an average of three samples or we've got three samples. And if we average them, we're looking at a total deflection or, or out of flatness of around about 200 microns, 0.2 millimeters. And uh, if we look at the warpage result, um, 
here we've just isolated the warpage result just on that top surface so that we more can more clearly make a comparison with the measurements that were taken. And you see that from uh, the high point to the low point, there's a, a range of Z deflection values there of around about 200 microns as well. So in reasonable agreement there for the magnitude as well as the shape of the um, prediction. Now, I, I didn't mention, but these uh, simulations in total are taking around about six hours to run, um, four and a half hours for the flow calculation and about an hour for the warp calculation. Uh, go to the next slide. That'll show again the warpage prediction for the FIT30 material. Again, the POR. Uh, again, um, deflect measured deflections from the three molded samples around about 200 microns and a similar magnitude predicted for the deflections uh, in a similar shape as well from the, from the prediction. So uh, that's looking good there as well. And now if we go to the th next slide and we look at the third material, this time it's the Zenite 5145L. Here we see a deviation where the prediction has not been able to match the magnitude of the molded samples. So the molded samples around 220 microns, the prediction about half of that or around 100, 130 microns. Um, now, the thing to call out here is that these warpage calculations are done using computed composite properties according to the fiber orientation, which is calculated. And those composite properties rely on the fiber orientations that were predicted, the properties of the fibers, and the properties of the pure LCP resin, uh, the mechanical properties, the, its coefficient of thermal expansion and its stiffness, Poisson's ratio. Now, it's not easy to measure the LCP properties of the pure resin because it's not supplied as a pure resin and, and even when it is it's very difficult to mold. So what we're using here is an assumption about some generic we're using some generic LCP pure resin properties and combining those with the fiber orientation and the fiber uh, properties. And we think that that's the weak point. That's the point that needs further investigation and work and the cause of this deviation from the warpage magnitude. So what we did was we made an effort to try and have a better estimate of those pure LCP resin properties, and that's on the next slide. We'll have a look again. Now the same case, but this time, the and the same molding result for the molding trials, but the prediction this time is done using LCP resin properties that have been estimated by looking at measured composite properties of, of this material. And in this case, the warpage deflection is now around 300 and or over 370 microns, so actually three times higher than what had been predicted with the previously assumed matrix properties. So here we see a, um, a point of possible area of further research is to find a better way to estimate a, a good representation or a true representation of these pure LCP resin properties. Um, we have some ideas on, on that, but it means taking more measurements on the composite properties and then doing a sort of a back calculation to try and estimate the pure LCP resin properties. So that's the state, that's the situation at the moment with warpage simulations. And now on the next slide, I will show you something that we've been doing um, in the early phases of the project before we had the actual molding trial data uh, to try and accelerate the computation time. Because as Ren Chen's explained, this current design, this test vehicle um, in this study is, is actually already an old design and the current state of the art designs are even much larger than this and computation times are becoming unmanageable. So what we've tried to do is um, have an approximate calculation which can reflect the influence of the pinhole regions and, and the, the influence of that has on flow, but, but reducing the computation time. So here we've got a comparison of filling pattern for the regular analysis and this rapid analysis, which is still in a prototype form. We're still evolving that. Um, this is an early prototype version. And we see an agreement, we, we're in good agreement with the filling pattern. Uh, and also, if we look over on the chart on the right and look first at the warpage magnitude, that was also in fairly good agreement, a prediction. This this was not the same materials that were used in the actual molding trials. This was in an earlier setup, so there's no actual molding data to compare to. But comparing the warpage prediction of the regular analysis and the rapid analysis, we see good agreement on the warpage magnitude. Um, 
around 170 microns. The prediction of injection pressure is also well matched, around 50 megapascals. But what's uh, important here, and, and the, the aim of this rapid analysis, is to radically reduce the computation time by a few orders of magnitude. And this was achieved, so we've gone from a computation time of around six hours to a computation time of 10 to 12 minutes. Um, this is for this uh, prototype. Um, now, you know, there's future work for us to do to um, ensure that the prototype works well for all molding conditions and all materials. So there's more work to do there, and, and that'll be our focus. Okay, and I think that concludes uh, my section of the presentation. So I'll hand back to Ren Chen. Okay, thank you very much, Franco. So I think, uh, uh, Ren Chen, Franco, before we move ahead, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. So the first one uh, is about, okay, do we expect a weaker structure if the weld line is longer for LCT? Uh, maybe I can take that one um, and yeah, more comment from others. Maybe uh, I think it's, if the longer weld line generally will result in bigger area impacted by weld line uh, in whole view of a weaker whole structure. But if we're talking about a weld line itself, the starting uh -huh. weld line uh, point is, uh, I think, weaker than later uh -huh. welding areas. Uh, in case we have a uh, ideal venting, but in real cases, the crack, uh, because of weld line, most of the time start from the uh, welding point near the geometry edge. Yeah, that's it, Haley. Okay. Um, so, yeah, any other comments? Yeah, I was just going to add that um, I guess the one, the other thing you need to think about with weld line strength is where is the weld line in relation to your load case? You know, depending on how you're stressing the part, um, it could be that the weld line is aligned or not aligned with the, the load. And so it may be a problem or not a problem, depending on how the part will be stressed. OK. And. Uh, Haley, I see another question there. I, I guess that one was for me about the compressibility. Sure. Um, and the question is, uh, is the compressibility only during the packing phase? And no, the compressibility is included during both the filling phase and the packing phase. Okay. And that, we, we think that's accurate. That, that's necessary for um, matching uh, key points in terms of the filling filling time uh, and and screw position. And yes, the software can does include a weld line prediction, so you can predict where the weld lines are. I see that question just came in. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we move ahead? Okay, then I think let's continue. Next session, uh, it will be the flow and water simulation from um, Cortex Modex 3D. Our presenter will be Sam. Sam? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is Sam from uh, Cortex System Modex 3D. So today I would like to uh, share what we did in the uh, past one and, one and a half years. So, uh, next page, please. Yeah, this is the outline, outline from our side, yeah, we will talk about the geometry simplification from the different partners. There are uh, two uh, partners and totally three models. And what we did is we try to uh, reduce the surface count, means we will simplify the model because originally the total uh, surface count is around 30 to even 90,000 uh, surfaces. So we will try to reduce the service count and make the workflow much smoother. So the benefit is we also can reduce the element count and also reduce the CPU time. And we will also compare what happened if we simplify the geometry model in feeding uh, pattern prediction and also the warpage displacement prediction. And we will give a summary 
uh, what we found or what we learned from this uh, geometry simplification study. And in the end, we will also share some uh, further going on work. Yeah, we uh, first part is do the geometry simplification before we get uh, any actual uh, more trial. But after that, last year we have done the uh, more trial, so we continue to do the simulation with the actual material with uh, uh, experiment parameters. So currently we are working on to uh, do the validation from the software simulation result to the uh, experiment. And the last one is because in this project we want to uh, figure out to understand the warpage, the low cost. So we uh, work with uh, the other partner to design one uh, test coupon and want to uh, study, use a simple model to understand what happened. And during the warpage, can we try, uh, can we separate the different effects? Well, what happened from different effects, then we can uh, manage the warpage well. So let's start to our uh, presentation now. So first one is a CPU circuit simulation. Yeah, we will do the simplification from uh, the model from our supplier. So from the uh, slides, you can see that there are totally three models, two from fast count. One is we are the core out, the, the frame is solid, we are any core out. And the other one in the middle is with a core out due to the uneven uh, sinkage effect. So people want to, uh, Uniform the sinkage. So usually we will do the core in the front region. And the other one on the right hand side is the model from the loads, only got the uh, with the core model. And from the picture here, you can see that the loads one actually the feature line, the blue color line is more. So actually this model is quite heavy. It contains totally 90,000 services. So later we will see the benefit by uh, simplification the model. Okay, so we will move on the FIT, the fast count model first. So there are two totally models. And our concept in the simplification is we try to keep the same geometric volume. Because if we change it, the geometric volume, we might need to also change the feeding time or injection speed. So we we don't want to uh, make the simplification too complicated. So we try to keep the same uh, volume of the part. So the idea is what you see in the middle part, there are two ideas. One is we transfer the pinhole geometry from the original one, which contain the 18 services. We simplify it to one uh, cylinder or the one tube. The other, Model two is we transfer to square shape. So on the right hand side of the chart, you can see that we can significantly reduce the surface count and also the solid element count. And it's around like a 65% less compared to the original model. Yeah, and of course with core model, because we have some core features, so the surface count or element count is more. However, after we simplify the uh, pinhole geometry, yeah, we can significantly uh, reduce the uh, element count. So the benefit by this one is we can reduce the file size uh, by 75% uh, less. And the geometry import process, because like I mentioned earlier, uh, this model contains like 30,000 services. So actually when we want to import the model from the CAT file, for example, the like IGS or state files into the software, it usually takes minutes, even sometimes hours. From the fast count one, it takes uh, less than one, one hour, but the lost one, it takes more than an hour. But if we can simplify the model, reduce the service uh, count significantly, in the simplified one, is around only a few thousand. So we can import it easily in just a few seconds. And also we can get benefit from the CPU time, the simulation time. Yeah, originally it takes around like, we are the core is takes eight, uh, five hours. 
with the cloud detects uh, and have our uh, if we can simplify the model then we can reduce or cut down the CPU time down to uh, around two hours okay so this is from the uh, overview of the simplification then let's move on to take a, a look at the uh, feeding pattern and warpage so in the feeding pattern yeah you can see that we did a uh, uh, original simulation and also try uh, simplify, uh, simplify model one and two. The simplify model one is the uh, feeding the shape, and you can see that the feeding pattern is get more different in the pinhole region. And after the study, we found that yeah, because if we simplify to the wrong shape, the gap or the distance between pinholes become bigger or wider. So it reduces the flow resistance during the feeding stage. So that's why we have uh, the other design. We do the uh, square shape, so we can increase the uh, flow resistance in the pinhole region without changing the uh, geometry value. Value. So we can see that the simplified model two yeah, can. Get a similar result to the original model uh, in both without and with co-out design. And next, uh, let's look at the warpage. So again, you can see that yeah, if we can uh, get a similar feeding pattern and warpage, the trend or the tendency yeah can be also similar in both with the co-out and without the co-out. And in this study, we mentioned that we hope we can uh, try to understand more about the behavior of the warpage. Yeah, of course, we know that it comes from feeding pattern, then you will orient the fiber, and the fiber orientation will get some anisotropic properties. So uh, next page, please. So we will try to separate the warpage into two uh, effects. One we call the random fiber effect, Means we eliminate the fiber orientation effect to assume the the it won't make any anisotropic property, and the other one is the fiber orientation effect. And from this study, we can see that yeah, we on the upper row is a random fiber effect. The warpage tendency in without co and with co actually is opposite. Means when we do the co-op in the front region, yeah, it also change the warpage if we didn't consider the fiber orientation effect. And we know that if we do the co-op in the front region, actually change the feeding pattern and also change the fiber orientation effect. Then if we look at the lower low, yeah, again, the with co-op and without co-op, the fiber orientation effect. The warpage tendency is also opposite. So, however, usually we just look at the total displacement, yeah, and it means we will combine these two together. And in this study, also we think it makes sense because the total displacement range means we calculate the upper range, the other a lower range. The total range in the core model is less than the original one. Okay, so uh, this is about a, a study in uh, FIT. The next we look at the. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I forgot this part. Then we will okay do the same thing in the simplified model one and two. Yeah, so you can see that in the simplified model we also can get a similar warpage tendency. Not only the total displacement. If we yeah, split to into random fiber effect and fiber orientation effect, yeah, you can see the prediction is still similar. So it means uh, the simplification uh, work can give some idea or give some a uh, quicker uh, idea if we do some core design in the front region and try to quicker get the idea how does it affect the total warpage. Yeah, so from this one. This is uh, with core without the core out, we can see the good agreement between the simplified model and the original model. The next page is 
with the core out. Yeah. Again, similar to the Orlando one, the we are the core one. Yeah, we also can get a similar warpage tendency. And of course, uh, like we said, we simplify the model. So we don't uh, expect the, the value, the volume, the value, warpage displacement value to be the same, but we are looking at the, the trend can be similar. And for our study, yeah, with the call out, the total displacement range is lower <laughs> to the, uh, we are the call out. Okay, so this is uh, the simplification study on the bus car model. And next, we will look at the uh, simplification study on the loss one. So in the loss one, we only get the call out model. So from the previous study, the experience, we know that the long shape cannot get a good uh, prediction compared to the original one. So we only take the, the square one. And square one, you can see that the element count in this model, we can get a more, even more uh, reduction because the original design is more complicated. Yeah. Previous one, the fast count one, the single pin hole contain only 1818 services. But from the lot one, there are 44 service per hole, per pin hole. So from this one, if we do the same simplification process, yeah, we can reduce the file size up to the 90%. And the geometry import also can reduce to just uh, seconds. And the mesh count, yeah, can reduce 65%. And CPU time here, we will, we do the different uh, simulation parameter. We turn on the compressible flow option. So the reduction not that much, however, we still can get like 30% less in the CPU time. So next, we will look at the feeding pattern. Yeah, try to uh, make sure, okay, if we do the simplification, we still can get a good or similar prediction from the original one. So from this slide is uh, showing the feeding pattern and warpage displacement. Yeah, so again, similar to the previous study in the feeding pattern, I think still okay. Yeah, we can get a similar feeding pattern and in warpage, we also get a similar tendency in the warpage. So, Again, we will do the uh, study in the warpage, which uh, next page, please. We will uh, separate the total displacement into two uh, factors. One is a random fiber, and one is a, a fiber orientation effect. Yeah, so not only the total displacement similar, yeah, if we look at the uh, random fiber or fiber orientation effect, yeah, also similar. So from this study, uh, we can give some summary. A nice page, please. We found that uh, if we want to success the simplification, yeah, I think the one of the uh, key is the flow resistance in pinhole region. So from our study, we know that yeah, not only keep the uh, same uh, geometry volume, we also have to try to keep the same flow resistance in the pinhole region. And the benefit from this simplification is we can make the simulation workflow become smoother, faster, more efficiently. And feeding pattern or warpage, if we can make sure the flow resistance in the pinhole region is similar, then we can get a similar warpage tendency. However, there's still some concern in this kind of uh, simplification work. Yeah, we still need a base run for the verification because we need to yeah, double check the feeding pattern or warpage tendency. Then we can do the further uh, call out design because uh, during the design stage, yeah, it's difficult just one step to reach the final of call out design. So normally the designer need to run different uh, simulation design, different ideas. So if they can have an initial uh, verification, uh, simplified model, 
and make sure the result is similar to the original design, what we are the core design, then they can do the further work. And the other thing is the fiber, fiber orientation actually is very complicated and difficult to equivalent. So even uh, we say that currently the orbit change is similar, but if we look at, look at a deeper orientation, actually uh, we won't say it's the same. Yeah, maybe total effect is similar, but if we look at the locally, yeah, it's still some difference. Okay, so uh, this is the summary for the geometry and simplification study. And uh, one more part is about our further ongoing work. Yeah, so the first thing is, yeah, from the previous presentation, we know that we already uh, done the more trial with the different material, three different material, three different models, two from Hoskam, one from Rhodes. So currently we are working on the uh, validation, simulation validation with the uh, uh, experiment. So you can see that some uh, uh, outcome from our study. Yeah, we are already working on the two models from Hoskam. So we compare, we use the uh, actual material yeah, three grades with the real model, real molding par parameter, and currently we take the middle one, the more temperature, injection speed, packing pressure, we all take the middle one, and we compare the feeding pattern and the warpage tendency. Yeah, so we are working on this, and maybe in the future we can uh, give the update about this study. And the other study, uh, the ongoing work is, yeah, we want to understand the warpage from different effects. So we uh, work with uh, uh, one of the partner to design the coupon, test coupon. So on the left hand side is the initial ideas. We hope we have some uh, sample model and get some uh, warpage and we can do some study about it. So in the last year, we try to use the software to do some uh, design verification. So to confirm the design. So on the right hand side, sorry, back to the, yeah. On the right hand side, you can see we have a different design. And eventually uh, we do the simulation. Yeah, next page, please. Yeah, we found that if we want to have the uh, sufficient or enough uh, or pitch, we have to add the more slots with a call out that like you see on the screen. If we only contain the four slots, yeah, the warp pitch for displacement is less. And the, the range is only like uh, uh, 20 micron is too less. So we try to, uh, so it has 200 microns. So we try to add the more slots or add the more call outs. And we found that uh, the warpage displacement, the range is much bigger and uh, is stronger uh, enough for our study. And currently the schedule is we have done the more trial uh, recently. So in the following work, we will continue to do the simulation and try to do the verification and understand the warpage effect more. Okay, so this is uh, my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sam. Right, so I think uh, I will move uh, into just an update on where the status from dynamic warpage. So in this project, we do have uh, two partners uh, uh, that is uh, involved, uh, Acrometrics and Incidix. So Acrometrics is known for the shadow moray uh, uh, approach and in physics, uh, the projection more. So, uh, uh, however, unfortunately, I think uh, once we have the sample, once the sample is done and shipped to everyone, including acrometrics uh, and uh, in physics, uh, there was some de uh, a delay due to, uh, yeah, we have, I think globally, we have uh, another round of uh, the pandemic wave. So that actually uh, restricts uh, the resource of uh, from our measurement partners uh, to be able to help us uh, conduct the measurements. So we only have a very limited uh, round one sample and of measurement and the round one uh, is even mainly 
targeted to uh, to set up uh, the method or the best method for the dynamic warpage. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think that uh, we can share uh, too much of it, but uh, the samples are already there with our palm partners. So I will say that uh, continuous effort will, will be done in this area in the subsequent phases uh, of the project. Okay. And also, uh, yeah, the dynamic wall picture is uh, of also of high importance because uh, we know that uh, the socket uh, when it, it will definitely went through uh, the SMT reflow. So SMT reflow at a higher temperature, and uh, it is uh, as like previously, we do see an indication that uh, in the high temperature environment, there are uh, potential uh, stress, residual stress, uh, uh, and all kinds of stress relaxation that is going on. So we would like to know uh, in uh, more detail how that will affect uh, the SMT performance. So, um, and finally, I will go, we will reach the project summary and the recommendations. So I think uh, like what we discussed before, uh, in the CPU sockets, uh, uh, until the size that we see just as of today, the geometric design of the socket, uh, uh, has the frame has the largest influence on warpage. Uh, of course, um, we, won't, we did not uh, have a chance to do a lot of studies in the pinhole, uh, geometry itself, that will, uh, will, I can say, will also have uh, to a certain degree affect the warpage. But uh, mm, I think from it, that, that has uh, electrical needs to be met. So when it comes to uh, the warpage, the final warpage uh, management, I think usually it is the uh, frame, the, the, the frame that uh, we, is the only area that we can play with to uh, further improve or to further manage uh, the CPU socket uh, warpage. And of course, uh, other than the geometry of the, uh, geometry of the frame, uh, we managed to have a further understanding on how the molding process parameters can be further managed from uh, the, the injection parameters, uh, I think namely the packing pressure and the mold temperature. And of course, uh, there's always an option to also um, uh, change uh, the, the material grid selection to buy further margin in your in your warpage uh, magnitudes. And of course, uh, definitely we know uh, with the help and also a lot of in-depth discussion uh, with our material partners, uh, of course there's a lot of uh, mm, proprietary info involved when it comes to the LCP and especially fillers. So that's why uh, we do not, we are not able to uh, disclose too much at, uh, at in the webinar, but of course the benefit of having been in the project is uh, uh, we, we do uh, being able to be given some uh, to some extent to some level of insight of how these uh, anisotropic material properties and uh, the, the shrinkage uh, and how they affect uh, the warpage of uh, the CPU socket. So and also. Uh, the computational time is speed up. Yes, it is indeed uh, achieved, and especially for the flow part of the simulation. And I can say that it is uh, uh, within uh, satisfactory uh, accuracy. But of course, uh, we have some successes in the warpage from the simplified model, uh, but not all. So that's why um, we think that there is further effort uh, that is uh, required, I think, as uh, both uh, Franco and Sam has mentioned in uh, this area. So uh, I think overall, uh, we have, uh, I think through this activity, we have uh, demonstrated uh, and established uh, the analysis and validation framework for uh, the socket uh, development over here. So uh, of course, what's next? Well, we, like uh, I mentioned before, uh, we will recommend, uh, of course, uh, a continued development of uh, the simplified model in the warpage uh, section. So I think what happens is uh, each of our software partners, they will take away uh, all the information, the data that we generated and the learnings here uh, into uh, their own company and further uh, develop on this. So for our audience here, so if anyone that is uh, interested to learn more, so you are encouraged uh, to approach them to uh, inquire further about uh, the details of it. 
of course, uh, the project member here has a benefit to uh, get to use the beta, the beta version of uh, of that. Of, but of course, uh, we have to use it with uh, known uh, engineering risks and also our own engineering judgment. Those are not official uh, uh, releases. And uh, yes, another area of uh, that I will recommend to look into is the residual stress uh, relaxation, where it can play a significant role. So that's why uh, the coupon that uh, I think Sam shared, and we already we actually generated those coupons with the help of uh, another of our socket partner, uh, Envino. So uh, we have the sockets. So I think that uh, the dynamic warpage uh, uh, measurements and and the behavior of uh, the residual stress relaxation of those coupons will be of uh, high high interest. And uh, we we wanted. Um, in initially, we wanted to extend uh, this what we know what we achieve here into the one hundred by one hundred uh, uh, mm socket, but uh, because due to the the, the delays and uh, the the situation, the global situation, so I think uh, we will have to push this into the future phase of the project. So this is something that we highly recommend uh, to look into. Okay, okay. So with that. Uh, once again, I would like to thank everyone and also I'd like to thank my team members for uh, the patience and also the uh, cooperation that is given uh, and uh, to make uh, this journey uh, possible. So uh, with that, we will go into, we still have a, like two minutes left, so hopefully we, it's enough for the Q&A session, if any. Okay, thank you, Lin Chen. Uh... So we have a, a question uh, in the chat uh, asking about uh, effect, I think uh, probably to Sam. Uh, could you clarify the total displacement a little bit? Is that uh, total equals to random plus orientation effect or decoupled simulation or, or the random orientation simulation first? Okay, uh, for this one, yeah, usually we do run the total displacement prediction. And however, our solver will uh, calculate one more time is to eliminate or ignore the fiber orientation effect because during the total uh, displacement calculation, yeah, we can see that all the effects like uh, sinkage effect uh, and isopic from the material or the fiber orientation. And for some study, you will find some users, they want to understand, okay, what's the root cause from the warpage, for the warpage. So we try to separate, it's come from the sinkage itself or from the orientation. So our solver will calculate one more time to ignore the, the an isotropic poverty from the fiber orientation and show you the displacement. So we just assume this, as the random fiber effect. So the fiber effect is uh, just simply uh, re reduce or conduct the random fiber effect. Then we got a fiber orientation effect. Yeah, this is what we do like this. I think. Uh... Another one is uh, from Wiki. It's uh, more like a comment now question. Uh, it said, uh, is this collaboration across different partners helped to understand the need of improving the simulation materials and environment uh, metrology better? Has this helped uh, accelerate the development of these uh, areas? So I think uh, maybe something can comment by the team for participating all yeah. from the but perhaps I can give uh, what I observe. So in terms of uh, the in improving the simulation, yes, we did uh, uh, achieve the, in the speed up and the improvement in the flow section. And also we realized that uh, each of, and also like uh, Funko mentioned that uh, there is a spe special, uh, uh, a special viscosity model, right? That actually match allows the flow pattern to be matched up very well with uh, 
what we have from the short shot, uh, the short shot samples. And when it comes to materials, yes, there is uh, in the background, uh, because of this collaboration, uh, I think in the background, there are some materials that are not uh, readily available in our software partners uh, database. So actually there are efforts in uh, to actually correct get these uh, materials uh, characterized and uh, to make them, uh, I, I'm not sure are they open or they are still specific to Zelenis, but uh, definitely that has been done. So there are uh, the materials, uh, uh, you can say the material cut is, uh, is, is there. And the next point is, uh, we realized that uh, that's one, uh, one thing that we learned is uh, like uh, in Franco, Franco's uh, PowerPoint, uh, we, meant, we realized that the matrix uh, property or the resin is of a very of, uh, high importance because uh, in many cases uh, it was being estimated. But uh, we actually call out that and uh, I think uh, it, it, that area will be further looked into to have a, a better uh, representation of the material. Okay. In terms of acceleration of the development of this area, uh, yes, I would say we didn't achieve uh, what we want because we aim really high. I would say we aim really high, but at least on the flow part, yes, uh, we actually uh, accelerated the, the flow part and uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, some in some cases uh, the improvement is in orders of magnitudes. Uh, I don't know uh, the the idea uh, if any other team members would like to uh, chip in for this comment. Uh, if anybody has further questions, you can also speak out to unmute yourself. Yeah. And also, uh, you are always welcome to, uh, if you, after this, you thought of any questions, you are always welcome to email uh, Haley, me, or Wendy. So uh, we will definitely be uh, more than happy to uh, help to answer any questions that you have. Sure. Yeah, as uh, I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the webinar, we will share the presentation material and the recording. You can review it and uh, probably uh, also share with your colleagues. Uh, come back if uh, any questions. Uh, hey, Helen. Also, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, when is the, the next phase going to be set up? Yeah, I think uh, uh, after the webinar, we will start uh, discussing the scope of the next phase and what's the continuous work, some mm -hmm. open items uh, as uh, mentioned today, uh, some recommended area for the future work. So mm -hmm. we can start the definition of this, uh, the, the new phase of the project. Uh, I would say it's right away after the webinar to to start the next phase definition. Yeah. For, for the planning of the future work, uh, we will open up for uh, new participants. If anybody has interest, you can contact me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments before we end the session? Okay, if not, I would like to thank you all for your attendance. And also thank you the speakers, the team members for the great work. Um, thank you all. Okay, Have a thank nice you. Day. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a nice evening and a nice day ahead. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.